All right, guys. Well, I think you probably just watched me thrift uh, a little bit today. It is now 20 minutes till 9 p.m. Uh, Desiree's putting the kids to bed, and I have catching up to do. One day handling just absolutely kills me, and I got 30 listings done the other day, and I've got like 16 done so far today, uh, plus taking five kids to three different schools and making supper and uh, dishes and laundry and stuff. So life, you know, um, how many do I have to ship? 16 items for $502. That's just the generic thing that eBay tells me. 16 items for a paid total of 502. But then when I look at the 502, it says item subtotal 359. So it's probably $150 worth of shipping that people paid. Um, I don't really explore this eBay on the computer very much to know like that I can find that kind of thing out. But sitting here looking at it where I'm about to talk to you guys about stuff, I'm like, hey, let's look and see what the number is. Chicago hat, this is going to Canada. It's listed for, it was listed for $7. The guy came at me at $2.50. Decline, no. Um, like if it's worth, it's not worth the price of the box at $2.50. So I would if it, if I was gonna sell it for two dollars and fifty cents, I'd just donate it. Um, and then he offered four, and I countered at five. Um, I did I do want to sell it, but two dollars and fifty cents, like, and it's it's a cheap painter's hat. It ain't worth much, but two dollars and fifty cents isn't worth the the shipping he would have to pay on it. So this is a really cheap hat. Going to Canada, sold for five bucks. This I paid five dollars for. It's Dale Earnhardt, and it is uh just real cheap, but it's only been listed a day or two. Leather strap on the back. Um sold for I was surprised. I thought it would hang out for a while. I listed it for eleven dollars free shipping and got the full price offer or got the full price sale in a day and a half, which is fantastic. Um uh, Malco is uh, an apron that I've had and sold. I like to pick up these denim aprons. They were doing really well for me for a while. Maybe uh, when people were shelter in place, not leaving their house a lot uh, two or three years ago. You guys remember, right? That happened. Um, I was selling these pretty frequently uh, for like $20, $25. This one isn't great. It's branded. But if you can find older ones, selvage denim ones, if you can find uh, bigger ones or ones that are beat up so they look like they've been worked in a lot, those those would do well. This sold for $9 plus shipping and has been listed just entirely too long. Um, where that's Oh, this sweater's back here. Ralph Lauren Polo. I don't buy these anymore. This one I found in the death pile. You can find them sometimes that are cashmere, um, and that would be worth picking up, way worth picking up, like $100 worth picking up. This, it's a quarter zip uh, 2XL. It just as absolutely common as it could possibly be. For some reason, it has what appears to be grass clippings on it. So we're just going to do this real quick and get these... I don't know what happened to this. Maybe that box I just sat it in had some debris in it. But it uh, sold for $12 free shipping. It was listed for a long time for $15.50 uh, free shipping, and it didn't sell. And so today I got it listed, or today I got an offer for $12. And while I'm like, $12 free shipping, it's, you know, like... It's going to cost me $7 to ship, but it's, I wasn't getting it sold for $15.50, so I might as well take that offer. This says Marks. I know I paid $2.50 for this at Goodwill, uh, and I think if it rolls, it dings the bell. There's a little spring there that should this bell as you roll it anyway i paid two dollars and fifty cents for this 
and it just wasn't worth picking up. I listed it for $11 plus shipping. It sold for $9 plus shipping, but it's probably been listed a year and a half. It's neat, but it's going to be a pain in the butt to ship. Um, this I'm not going to pick up. I went to the yard sale where I got a bunch of stuff, uh, filled up the van, got the dental thing. I got a couple of typewriters. I got the uh, stenographer typewriter and like Redline Hot Wheels, uh, just a ton of good stuff. This um, Lafayette CB tube amp radio, it had 12AX7 tubes in it. 12AX7. The tubes were 12AX7. Um, and so if you find anything that has 12AX7 tubes, say it with me this time, 12AX7. Put it in the comments, 12AX7. I want you to memorize it. This is how we work on spelling words with my uh, first and third graders. Um, the um, This was, well, I could not find another one listed at any price ever. I didn't see anything on Worth Point. I didn't see anything on Listed or Sold or Terapeak. Um, I found some on like Pinterest where there wasn't anything that would link it to a price. I found some that were HB 444-25A and 25B, but this tube amp one, and those are neither one tube amplified. So the, those were like working for like $125 shipped. So this one, I just, I was like, I paid $20 for it a week ago. I'm going to list it for a hundred bucks plus shipping. I can't test it. You have to have an antenna for it to test it. And you, when I turned it on just to make sure that it powers up, it was making noises that having dealt with tube stuff long enough, I'm quite certain that it needs some new tubes. There were some resistor issues. Um, and so it was making a like squelching noise that it shouldn't have been making. So anyway, I listed it for a hundred bucks and it sold in two hours for 130. So that's pretty good. It's going to be a little bit of a pain in the butt to ship, but not too bad. Um, I'll double box it and put a whole bunch of bubble wrap in it and it'll be okay. It's the problem is it weighs like, it weighs like 12 pounds. I'm just going to interject here. This is the CB and this metal grating, like, Anything that has tube amps has to have vents. And so, because these tube amps are essentially old incandescent light bulbs. They get very, very warm. So if you see this kind of rounded corner, lots of holes, metal, almost industrial looking, um, on a CB or an old amplifier, it is generally indicative of something that is very high quality, very high end. They were much more worried about good performance than good looking, which was a thing for these old tube amp radios. These books picked up for 50 cents a piece. I thought they would be good. I guess they're not bad. They took a long time to sell, but $8 plus shipping. So $1.50 into $8 plus shipping. That's, that's okay return. Um, these two sweatshirts, one I got at Goodwill, for five bucks and the other one I paid three dollars for at a yard sale and the buyer came in and made me I let them listed fairly high buyer came in and made me a best offer on both of them and that's how Drew tip of the mitt flips likes to make mo money because when you ship things together you only pay shipping on one um Stanford uh sweatshirt just a cool vintage made in the u.s stanford university sweatshirt um it had a teeny little pinhole in it that i disclosed paid three dollars for that one this one was at goodwill and it's the game i don't know if oh yeah there is a little bit of a script up here at the top you can see but that g is the game which is a really obscure um late 80s early 90s um clothing label and i find it in hats a lot but you see sweaters and shirts every once in a while this is just a cool chicago bears crest these are going to i think new jersey which is weird and not like something where i think it's a 
freight forwarder either. Maybe I, don't, I was going to say maybe it's Pennsylvania. Maybe I just don't know, and it really doesn't matter. Um, I had I don't remember what I had them listed for, but I think it was like twenty five and thirty dollars, and the guy came in and offered me twenty and twenty two, which I mean if he's buying both and I'm so I'm in them for eight bucks and I'd sell it for forty two plus shipping. Buyers all in at fifty seven. I don't even think I can get two large men's sweatshirts into a uh, legal flat rate. So I'll probably send those. Uh, ground advantage and it'll cost me ten dollars but he paid 15 for shipping um guatemala this is a vintage not single stitch i thought it was single stitch maybe it's not even vintage it's on a guatemala tag it says it's vintage um i wrote vintage in the title so it must be vintage uh just a cool guatemala this is a it says it's size medium but it is pretty small cool shirt just a cool shirt um i don't know where this came from no clue pay sold it for 11.50 plus shipping and i think that was on an offer i think i had it for 12.99 and somebody came in with an offer so i like getting reasonable offers i don't like getting 50 percent off offers because i feel like that's not a real offer that's um uh, that's wasting my time Red Hot Chili Peppers paid 50 cents for this Red Hot Chili Peppers. This is an old print, but I mean, I'm sure they still use that some, but this shirt, a shirt very similar to this would have been part of one of their very earliest tours. Um, but this is relatively recent. I don't know if it has a year or 2019. Um, I paid 50 cents for this a week ago at a garage sale. And it sold for $11. Free shipping. Frady Cat. This thing plays Somebody's Watching Me. Um, and one of its eyeballs light up all the time. And the other one lights up sometimes. And he's supposed to go. Rear! And like his back goes up. But whatever motor it is. Actuator right here does not work so he basically just sits like this all the time unless you push him up and then he sits like that all the time and his mouth is supposed to move and sing the song but it doesn't but his head does turn um and i disclosed all of that and it's still sold i paid five bucks for it sold for 34 free shipping but they'll sell for 50 and 60 dollars shit plus shipping if they're in good working order so if you see that one when you start seeing halloween in your thrift stores that is a good one worth worth boloing being on the lookout for i pulled that shirt that's up next but i don't know what i did with it okay so this was not a good pickup um i paid 50 cents for this at a neighbor's yard sale thundercats you would think that this would do well this is probably even almost big enough to fit me 2x so real big size um and i uh, it's got to be a good size 2x to fit me i'm i don't know like you guys don't see me see me i uh i'm five eight a little over three bills so a uh, 2x is kind of gonna fit me but most of the time i'm in a 3x uh this one fit me so it's a good 2x um and that's but this i paid 50 cents for it assuming that the thundercats were an ip that would be that would carry its own and it did not sold for four dollars plus shipping so i mean i made money and i learned my lesson i bought a bunch of these stickers i bought a bunch of these stickers as part of a um auction like flat lot the when you you know you buy things at auction and it comes in that thing that's soda that comes in sometimes a flat of cardboard and i got like 16 of these and i listed them for uh eight dollars free shipping for two and i sold these at full price and i have one left so i've made some decent money i mean 
I didn't buy the flat to get these. They I don't even remember what was with them. But uh, I was like, oh, I bet those will sell for some price. Same yard sale where I got the ampli where I got the CB and I got the other things we were talking about, the stenographer thing, the dental thing. That yard sale that was a couple weeks ago. Maybe a couple weeks ago. Anyway, I I left behind this typewriter. Uh Olivetti Laterra 22. And I comped it when I was editing the video. And I was like, dang, I should not have left that behind. So I went back the next day. I'd gone on Thursday and they were open. And I went back on the Friday and they were still there. Or maybe it was Friday and Saturday. It doesn't matter. Anyway, I went back. It was still there for 10 bucks, And I listed it for 100 plus shipping. And I got a guy messaged me with wanting to buy it for 70 And I let it hang out. And then I got an offer for 65 And then I sent out offers at 75 And I didn't get any takers. So after that guy had messaged me about getting about buying it for um, 70 after about 24 hours, I just went ahead and took that offer because 10 into 70 is great. And I, I, I mean, you could type on this thing and it would work, but I don't. I said in the description, this is an old typewriter. It's an estate sale find. It hasn't been serviced in a long time, so it may need something. And it probably uh, needs a brand new ribbon because it's typing pretty faintly. And so, and also it's supposed to have a case and it didn't, it, the case was there when I bought it, but it was in such bad shape that I'm going to ship it with the case, but the case isn't worth including. Um, so I didn't, uh, include it in the listing. And anyway, buyer paid $99. So they, they're right, $99.83. They're right in under a hundred dollars all in on that. I paid 10 bucks for it. Um, but that, Olivetti, that's how I'm saying it. I think that's probably close. Uh, it's That's a really good brand. If you're finding those, they're made in Italy. Some of them are made in Germany, but that's an Italian uh, brand, and it's pretty expensive, about all of them by that company. So if you find Olive, Olivetti uh, typewriter, look it up. These are squinkies so the i bought over 500 squinkies for five bucks and i kind of thumbed through them and in the middle of trying to figure out what i even had i see this one and that could not possibly be anything but ursula and i found this one which was very obviously flounder so i was like all right, well, I'm going to start digging. And then I looked up this set and I found this set new in package. And we have every single one that was sold in that set in the little bubble thing. Um, and I paid $5 for the squinkies and sold everything but this set. I sold for like 80 bucks. Um, and then I sold this set for 17 free shipping. Uh, and this is how many? 12, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. So squinkies are a thing. Here I'm is maybe it's not entirely obvious what I'm what I'm holding. Um see if I can get an iconic looking one. Scuttle. So it's this you know, like if you're as old as I am, you know this gumball machine thing. Uh, maybe they still do that some. And so it comes apart like that. And then this has a little hole in it, but then it's entirely rubber, like a real slick feeling rubber. And so I'm going to keep an eye out for these. I'd never heard of them before. I don't, I've never seen them before that I know of, but, and then this little thing says, supposed to say squinkies on it. I think I may have one that doesn't. That's too bad. Uh, this little thing, when it's hinged, then it's an official bubble and says squinkies on it and it's hinged. 
And there's Sebastian under the sea. And it's... But these things are surprisingly valuable. I was looking up some lots and I ended up marking mine pretty, pretty low by comparison of some of the sold listings, but I paid five bucks and was ecstatic to get 80 and felt like that was within range of the market and it sold fast, which is, that's what I aim to do. In range of the market, not giving stuff away, but also, um, uh, selling it quickly. So that is everything that sold as of nine o'clock on Thursday night. And I have officially turned off one day shipping because I just cannot keep up with it. I'd spent, I'd done several times, several days in a row where I shipped, where I printed all the labels and shipped some of the stuff, but didn't have time to get it all shipped. And then I'd get to the end of the night. Oh, this was supposed to ship today. I'm just going to request the label and then I'll do the item reprint the label tomorrow so that I can get the thing shipped with, get the tracking uploaded on time and then have the tracking scan be late because that metric doesn't matter as much. But I'm back to two day handling time and give up the 10% discount for top rated seller plus because just where my life is right now, it's not really worth the extra work of having to ship. Like, it's easier for me to ship 18 items, 30 items over the all at once and find that time every two or three days than it is to have to find 40 minutes to ship 10 items every single day. Um, and record a video about it. So that's what we got. I'm going to try to get as much of this done as I can, but it's nine o'clock and I got to take kids to school in the morning and they only have a half a day of school tomorrow because of teacher or institute or imp school improvement or something. So Desiree's working all day and I'm home with the kids an extra half a day, which I love. I love having my kids around, um, but it does change my rhythm um, on a Friday. I might just, if I can get all of this stuff done today, I might just throw a yard sale the whole time that they are at school and then pick them up at noon um, and go home. But Levi will be mad at me if I do that. Anyhow, thanks for watching. Thanks for liking, commenting, and subscribing. Thanks for following and clicking the bell. We'll see you on the next one. Well, hello, YouTube. If my uh, clock on my stove is to be believed, it is one, nearly one in the morning. And if you sell framed art, vintage uh, CBs and antique Italian typewriters, you remember why you stick to t-shirts and uh, action figures. Because they ship a lot easier than the big, heavy, profitable stuff. Because I would rather sell 20 t-shirts, but they go slower. So I'm making money back in big chunks. But I'm up at 1 o'clock in the morning finishing shipping. Um, that's going to do it for this one, for sure. Thanks for watching, liking, commenting, subscribing. Following, clicking the bell, and all the things that you do. Yeah, I'm going to go to bed.